So I'm going to go ahead and film this intro right now because without a doubt I'm going to forget to do it later. Also I already have my makeup done and I have the books ready to go so I'm going to film the intro to this vlog now. As you may know I've mentioned her many times on my channel before but the lovely Ginger from Spice Reads Books and I have come up with an idea. It's not anything you know revolutionary it's been done before but we have never done it before so we're super excited to film this video and make these videos for you guys but we have decided and we've been wanting to do this for a long time to basically swap favorites so um, she's given me a list of 10 of her favorite books and I have given her a list of my 10 favorite books and each of us are choosing five from those lists I think we actually like gave each other 12 it doesn't matter. We chose five titles of that list and we're going to be reading them and vlogging our experience and hopefully not roasting each other for <laughs> the books that we like and hopefully finding some new favorites. So I'm super excited and I will in this clip just go over my TBR because um, the night that I'm filming this is actually Thursday night and we are not planning to start until the first Monday of November which I believe is November 2nd. If I finish my current read I might actually cheat a little bit and start one of the books just to make sure <laughs> that I finish them all. We're giving each other two weeks in which to complete these and hopefully edit the videos and have them up pretty soon after that um, which two weeks to read five books is very doable. But um, I just get a little anxious when I have a time crunch. I'm excited to see what book she's picked. I'm kind of nervous. I have a lot of middle grade on mine. And I know our reading tastes aren't too similar. She tends to read a lot more adult books than I do. Um, she's definitely matured out of YA much quicker than I have. I'm still very much into YA and I read a lot of middle grade. Whereas I know she reads, um, she reads some YA but not much. But she reads a lot more adult fantasy. I know she reads a lot of horror and thriller books as well as historical fiction which I don't gravitate towards as much. I'm more in love with like a pretty cover and if adult book has a pretty cover then I'll probably pick it up. So definitely she's getting me to get out of my comfort zone a little bit with this. Um, I chose three that were kind of more in my wheelhouse and then two other titles that are very much like ginger aesthetic books. Um, so without further ado I will get started into the TBR for this vlog. Actually she kind of already knows two of them that I'm reading which is kind of annoying because Spoiler alert, was kind of supposed to be a surprise, but anyway, she already knows two of the ones that I'm reading. So the first one that she knows that I'm reading is The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier. This is because I know she's probably going to be reading The Beautiful, I think she told me, because um, we both recommended books by the same author, and obviously this is one of her favorites, and since I recommended The Beautiful, she was like, well, I'm definitely reading that, and you should read this, um, because it's by the same author, and if we're, it's bound to be probably at least like a four-star book for each of us. Um, so this is about, like, um, Khalid, who is the Caliph of Khorasan, and he's a monster, and he takes all these wives, and he ends up, like, killing them the next day. And then there is Shahrazad, who is, like, the first volunteer to be his bride, and she aims to, like, stop his reign of terror, and I don't know if it's, like, a revenge story, but I've heard a lot of good things about this, and I'm excited to read it because, like I said, I really liked The Beautiful, and that was on my list. So if I like this, and it's by the same author, and she's also recommending it to me, then I feel like this is a given. So the next book is actually helping me with the other readathon or like book project that I'm doing this month. That is um, Truth Witch by Susan Dennard or Denard. I don't really know which way is the right way to say her name. I don't know much about this other than that I bought it quite a long time ago when it came out and I never picked it up. I picked it up because a lot of people were hyping it up but I never felt the need or like the pull to like read it just because this cover doesn't capture my attention in any sort of way and that's the kind of thing that is going to compel me to pick up a book honestly um i mean i bought it because it had so many positive reviews and ratings but i never wanted to pick it up because this, this cover just doesn't do it for me <laughs> i know this is a whole series um i don't know really anything about this other than i think she, she's a witch that can detect the truth yeah this has been sitting on my shelf since like 2017 so it's time to get it off and so thank you ginger for <laughs> literally making me read a book that's been on my TBR for the longest time. So the next one is again kind of more in my comfort zone because it's a middle grade novel. I'm excited to read this. Um, I know she's obsessed with this series and she loves animal books but the book that she had put on her list that I've chosen is Blue Star's Prophecy which is a warrior's book um, by Erin Hunter 
Warriors, at least the first one, was about this cat, this house cat named Rusty, who wanted to be wild and part of the Warrior Thunder Clan. And there's action and adventure, and it was just a lot of fun. And I know this is like one of her favorite series of all time, like just nostalgic through childhood and stuff like that. I really enjoyed the first one. And then the last two are probably the most outside of my comfort zone, and you'll know just by looking at them. So I have chosen Pet Cemetery by Stephen King. I have never read anything by Stephen King, so I'm excited to kind of step into his writing. I hear, I've heard some mixed reviews or mixed thoughts um, on his writing, whether it being like too slow, just a lot of different things. <laughs> I'm interested to see what I think of this. I haven't seen the movie, um, but I did see the trailer for the movie, and I'm just gonna base my synopsis off of the information that I gathered from the movie, or the, the trailer of the movie. Um, so I think there's like this town where there's like a pet cemetery, and then if you bury your pet there, it like comes back to life. And so I think in the trailer, like a little girl gets like hit by a car or she like dies. And so they bury her in the pet cemetery so that she'll come back to life. But then she's not the same. That could be completely wrong. <laughs> I think that's just what I got from the trailer. And to be honest, I don't even know if that's what actually happened in the trailer. Um, I did want to see the movie when it came out. I never got around to it. I'm much more of a fan of like watching scary movies rather than reading about them because I can kind of disconnect myself when I see other characters and I don't actually like immerse myself fully into the story. But I'm interested to see what I think of this. And then the last book that is definitely out of my comfort zone as well, The Book of Lost Names by Kristen Harmel is adult, horse, adult historical fiction, I believe, and I definitely don't read adult historical fiction. I think I've maybe read one in my lifetime <laughs> and I don't even think I finished it and I had the audiobook too. This I believe is about a woman named Ava Traub Adams and she's a librarian and she sees a book that she recognizes as the Book of Lost Names. This one's definitely a stretch. This one more than any of the other ones I think. Even Pet Cemetery, even though I don't read a lot of horror, I have read quite a few thrillers at least this year, more than I do normally. I don't think I've read one historical fiction book with, that didn't have any magic in it whatsoever at all this year. So I'm interested, really interested to see what I think of this because this is the most outside of like what I would normally pick up for myself. In fact, I was trying to read Daughter of Smoke and Bone by Lainey Taylor because of, you know, YA, definitely what I'm comfortable with, but we didn't have it, first of all, in my store and I didn't feel like ordering it online. I did check because I know she's coming out with new covers, but they weren't going to be released until December 1st. And I didn't want to buy the old covers because they're hideous. <laughs> so this was my last minute switch um, because it was a new release, we had it in store, and I was just like, you know what, might as well just tiptoe out of my, you know, little safe bubble and try something new. So Ginger, I hope I like this. This kind of scares me a little bit because I don't know how I'm going to feel about it just because it's so outside of my normal realm of reading. This is what my TBR looks like. Ah! <laughs> I hate when I try to do that. It never works because they're so slippy. So this is my TBR for the next two weeks. Wish me luck. I hope I like them, Ginger. I'm gonna do my best. <laughs> ah! Oh, he's so handsome. So Ginger told me that she baked some muffins for her vlog. I'm not creative. It's getting late. I don't even know. Um, I'll give a reading to update. Um, but the baking muffins, I'm just going to eat one that someone else baked for me. <laughs> so for Halloween, um, we had a couple friends over from work and she baked these delicious pumpkin cheesecake muffins and they're to die for. So I'm going to have one right now. I don't do anything exciting. All I do is eat and read. Maybe watch some Netflix. And that's my life. Speaking of Ginger, I finally checked my mailbox, and by I, I mean my roommate Haley checked my mailbox and realized that I had stuff that came in, um, because I still didn't know where the mailbox was in my new apartment, so I just like kind of forgot about it, um, but like I said, speaking of Ginger, I ordered 
the last of her little um stickers her her spooky stickers um so go and check out her etsy by the way it's studio vixen um studio vixen art i believe is the actual name but i got her little spooky stickers and the first one is this little kitty it's not going to i have to change the i have to change the focus settings because it's not going to focus on this so the little kitty it's so cute oh ignore my nails though that's disgusting ah um so yes there's a little kitty sticker so cute very cute like i said i didn't check my mail so these probably came in like before halloween but i mean i'm still gonna use them we have this little spider very cute as well kitty cat this one that says spooky times very cute we have this little bat and we have pumpkin and skull my nails are really tragic this is making it worse so yeah go check out um, Ginger's um, Etsy shop she has so many cute stickers I really want to buy her watercolor series she has um she's done it for like plants and then for like australian like animals and i think it was to support um the wildfires that were going on earlier this year um i'm definitely going to be stickering this like on my laptop probably because it just reminds me of berlioz it's always a good time for spooky time speaking of spooky times let's talk about pet cemetery so i am on chapter 22 106 pages in and I'm surprisingly liking this a lot, and I was not sure whether or not I was going to like it. I liked it so much that I wanted to start tabbing it, and I don't know if you can tell, but I didn't have any tabs when I was starting to read this at work, so I just used giant sticky notes and was underlining the parts that I liked. So, and then once I was off of work, I went to Target and bought sticky tabs so I could start tabbing it. Um, I'm also, oh yeah, here's the tabs right here. Um, I'm also listening to this on audiobook and I really like the narrator so I'm getting through it pretty quickly and I am very entertained. So far we've had not so many like haunty spooky stuff but like definitely some jarring material um, because the main character is like a father and he like is a doctor so he's like brushes with death constantly like people like being injured and stuff like that and injured slash dying the dynamic between him and his wife are so confusing and this is why it like makes me nervous to like ever get married because like one minute like i'm like they need to break up and the next i'm like oh they're so cute but then i don't know is that just marriage are you just like fighting and at each other's necks like one day and then like making up the next it's it's too complicated for me the daughter is cute but also sometimes i want to throttle her anyways i am enjoying it though i do like the characters i'm having a reaction to them yeah i was surprised that i, I for some reason i thought the writing was going to be a lot more dense than what it is maybe because i'm used to like seeing stephen king's books like over a thousand pages long and he's actually funny i feel like He's had some funny jokes, some funny moments in there, or even just the writing is kind of tongue-in-cheek a little bit sometimes, so I like that. I thought it was going to be boring, to be honest. But in the meantime, don't forget, check out Ginger's um, Etsy shop, Studio Vixen Art. Go support, and I will link it down below. mind telling me what I'm doing wrong this I bought this lamp like what three weeks ago now because it looked cool and I wanted something cool to go with the rest of our setup but I'm um, now you know it's been in the box for three weeks and it's not been set up and like this part was the easy part but like I don't know what I'm doing wrong but it's not wanting to go in I even tried to loosen this part but like it's just not having it and then the instructions don't really help either it says install the socket support one by the allen screw number two and i'm like i don't i don't get am i stupid maybe i'm just doing this wrong but like it won't go in okay so we found out that we're actually like missing a piece so i have to go send the lamp back and order a new one which is mildly annoying i didn't film anything yesterday um, 
but I did get some reading in. Um, I was just too stressed out after work with the election and everything going on. That's the real horror story, not this. This, <laughs> the real horror story is what's going on with our country. So yeah, I was way too anxious last night. So <laughs> yesterday wasn't really a good day to film anything. Um, but I did get more into Pet Cemetery. I stopped mid-chapter because I'm a heathen. I want to talk about this and I don't think it'll necessarily be spoilery because everything that I had guessed in my synopsis like going into this has happened and what I'm about to talk about isn't anything like in detail um, because like I said I already mentioned what I thought it was gonna be about was that like there's a cemetery and you bury your animals there and they come back to life but they're not the same which is exactly what happened technically anyways that's what it, well, that's what happened so they bury the family cat or the dad does because he doesn't want his daughter to find out and the cat comes back and it's not the same but listen okay <laughs> There's a couple of things with that that I want to get to. The characters, okay, where do I start? I really like the writing and the atmosphere. I think that's all really great. And I do enjoy some of the characters, especially the neighbor Judd and his wife. But the family itself, or at least the parents, the main character and his wife, they tend to annoy the crap out of me, especially the wife, Rachel. She needs to get a grip. I mean, right now she's kind of like breaking down to why she is the way that she is. But like at the same time, she's just been so obnoxious this entire book. I swear to God. But like at one point, so they have like a two-year-old and he, they like come back from like a trip and they like went on an airplane and the baby gets sick. And since her husband's a doctor, she's like depending on him to like diagnose him. And he's like, well, he has a virus. And she's like, well, what do you mean he has a virus? And she's like, how do you know? And he's like, bitch, you want to get a second opinion? Then let's take him to a fucking hospital. And she's like, no, I don't want to do that. And then the next day the baby almost dies because she's stupid going circling back to the cat whose name is church short for winston churchill it's like the daughter's like favorite thing in the world she's obsessed with this cat so that's why he was like when he was in charge to take care of it and it died he was like fuck so they go and bury the cat and the cat comes back to life but it's not the same before they even the cat you know bites it he talks about how he doesn't want to get the cat fixed because it'll turn him into a lazy blob and he won't want to do anything and he likes that about the cat that he's kind of wild Speaking of wild cats, here comes Berlioz. But all in all, they end up deciding to do that so that he will become lazy and he won't, you know, cross the street, which could get him killed or like hit by a car. Which, why aren't they keeping him inside anyways? I guess they live in the middle of nowhere, but they also live like literally by a busy like freeway highway where there's like trucks just barreling through. Um, but eventually, yeah, so he does get him fixed, but the whole reason why he didn't want to for the longest time is because he liked that about him, that he was wild and crazy. So, which... It, gives like the impression that if you get a cat fixed yes the majority of the time they will become a little bit like lazy and fat and like not want to do anything but I swear to god I wish that was the case with my cat I got him fixed like immediately as soon as he was like old enough to and he is still crazy wild wants to play constantly will wake me up at the crack of dawn to like play and meow and he's like he's insane so I wish that was the case, but it's not. So maybe it's my own personal bias that's like kind of interjecting like the narrator and the author just cause like, I don't know, he was just being so annoying and whiny about it. And also it just feels like very like male-ish. I don't know, I feel like it's a guy thing maybe, but it was just like annoying. But not only that, okay, so they get the cat fixed, he becomes lazy, but anyways, he dies, he bites it, bury him, comes back to life. Cat's not the same though, but like they keep like really hammering home the fact that the cat is not the same But the cat is just doing normal cat shit Like he's like so aghast and appalled When like the cat kills like a bird and like a mouse and like leaves like the entrails like on his doorstep Which I grew up in the middle of nowhere and I had a cat that was like an outdoor cat because we kind of lived in a similar situation where we had like a very big yard We weren't on a busy highway though so there wasn't any risk of him like, you know, getting hit by a car because we were kind of, it was suburban, but enough where our houses were really far apart. My cat, he was an outdoor cat. We had like a big tree, like a huge backyard and he would constantly like bring us gophers, birds, mice, whatever. And that's what cats do. But he's like, this cat's, there's something wrong with him. <laughs> and like the whole time the cat is just like, literally they're just like chilling. He's just like moving about. He's not doing anything sinister. It just kind of smells a little bit dead. <laughs> like that's the only like 
obscure thing is like the cat has like a really like rancid smell to it now but like and it kind of like walks a little bit funny but like <laughs> I don't know I just think it's so funny how like afraid of this cat he is granted it is a zombie cat so yes in essence it's not natural but the cat's not doing anything like overly frightening like it's just walking it's just sleeping he like wakes up and it's like sleeping and purring on his chest i'm just waiting i don't understand why he's like disturbed by this cat and so far the cat has literally done nothing not even to the little girl nothing it just smells so i just wanted to rant about that for a little bit i mean aside from that aside from the main character and his wife being kind of the most obnoxious annoying people ever ugh, i swear to god this is like a Sometimes they're cute and then other times their marriage is so exhausting and I like literally I'm like why are you guys together? I hate this. You guys are the most petty arguments ever. Anyways, I did start continuing tabbing it and I tried to go back and tab the parts that I liked um, in the beginning. There, like I said, there is a lot of humorous writing um, so I like that and there also is just like lines that I really like as well. So yeah, I'm gonna continue on with this today and hopefully, God willing, I'll finish the majority of it because I really feel like I need to get on to some other books. But yes so i finished pet cemetery i haven't vlogged since when's the last time i updated was it tuesday so god today's saturday and it's pretty much been a week and i only finished this was it last night or two nights ago um and i haven't given an update as far as like my thoughts on it so far. Well, I mean, so far I finished it. I ended up giving it a four stars. I think going into it, since I knew everything that kind of was going to happen, literally from the movie trailer, not everything, but mostly, I kind of wasn't held in sort of any sort of suspense, but I did enjoy the writing of this book as well as not really the characters <laughs> the characters i think that was probably like the the most struggling point of this i did like the writing though i had i liked the ending too actually so once we started getting into the ending like the my tabs ended up running out like i stopped tabbing it because i was just purely listening to the audiobook and like i don't know i just didn't continue tabbing it although i could have but once we get into the part where a human dies <laughs> later on that started kind of getting creepy and it gave me like um dr frankenstein vibes if you've read that the main character kind of you know very similar crossover. I wonder if he was inspired by the classic. So I will say I really enjoyed it towards the end. I thought that's when it was at its most creepiest, when it's at its most like uncanny and uncomfortable, which is what I wanted the whole book to do. So I did like the ending, I, so, but I ended up giving it a solid four stars. All of my critiques that I had earlier about the cat are valid, but the kind of, um, <laughs> the cat kind of does something. I don't even know if he does it on purpose. But like, I think I like the cat's role. And it wasn't even that big of a moment, but it was pivotal in a sense. But the cat does kind of have like a meaningful moment like towards the end. So I liked that. But yeah, so I can understand why Ginger likes But I think this was a good step into it. I don't ever read Stephen King. I don't know if I'll end up like picking up more of his stuff. There was one critique and I know this is not one critique, another critique that I have. I know he's not well known for being super PC and I know this was like, it was set in 1983. I don't know if that's when this book was written. So it was also published in 1983. And he does use um, the R slur, which I was not a fan of. I get it, it's part of the time. I know there's other issues with this author that people have issues with, completely valid, I get it. Um, so it was mentioned, that word in particular was used um, quite often towards the end of it. Just like, whatever. <laughs> Not a fan. But, I mean, overall, the story was good. It got really cool towards the end. Some of it was a little bit convenient. But I guess I kind of think that's how a lot of horror movies go. It's like things just like kind of fall into place and like bad things happen. I liked it more than I thought it was going to. Which is saying something because like this and the one book that I'm reading now, I currently didn't have the highest hope for. Mostly because they were just out of my comfort zone. So anyways, four out of five stars to this. I'm happy that I accomplished that. 
The next book that I'm reading, I have the dust jacket over here, but so I am currently reading the Book of Lost Names. This is just the dust jacket because the book book is in my backpack. I'm also listening to this on audio while reading it physically and so far I don't really know what to think of it. It's, it's again, not really my jam. This is about a woman named Ava who is living during World War II and she is Jewish and she has Jewish parents and she's living in France though and they think that they have escaped persecution. And so they flee to another part of France and she ends up, she accomplishes this by forging like papers for them and that kind of leads her into the second act of what she's doing, like her new purpose is to like help other Jews that are being persecuted like have fake papers but um, the reason why it's called the book of lost names is because she is afraid of these children that she's helping um, she's giving them like Christian names and she doesn't want them or at least on their papers on their IDs and she doesn't want these children to forget who they are and where they're from and their heritage so they come up with like a system you know logging each of the kids names in this book and it's like there's a code to it. There's a lot more going on besides that, but that's kind of like where the title stems from. This almost seems like fluffy for a historical fiction. Like this doesn't feel as like heavy on the history. Like it kind of is, but it's more about like these interpersonal relationships. And there's also like a big romance that's kind of at the forefront of this, which I'm not super invested in. Yeah, and I had a feeling that this wasn't gonna be like my number one pick. I like I like historical fiction that's more melancholic than this is. This kind of just feels like a puff piece in my opinion. Also, it switches between in the now and then her in the past because she's like an 80 year old woman like in our time now. It switches between those perspectives. And I'm not really a fan of that either. As a grandma, she still kind of feels like a not like other girls, which is funny. So overall, I'm about halfway through this right now and it's just okay. I really wasn't expecting that much of it, so I'm not like super disappointed, but that's where we're at right now. <laughs> um, I'm hoping to finish the majority of this tonight because we're about to get into week two and I still have three more books to read, so wish me luck and hopefully I'll remember to update you once I finish it. It's really great that you can see the garbage hole that is my room <laughs> in the background. Love that. It's been a hot minute since I've checked in um, because it took me a while to finish the books and we're not even done yet. So I think the last that I updated you, I was reading the Book of Lost Names by Kristen Hamill? Question mark? Don't know. Last name is Hamill for sure. And I gotta be honest, Ginger, but I didn't like it. <laughs> I'm so sorry, Ginger. I am probably reading this like a two star, um, but to be fair, this wasn't something that I thought I was going to love going into it. I mean, I didn't think I was going to like dislike it as much as I did, which is unfortunate. I'm so sorry, but <laughs> we'll get to, there is a positive to this. Um, yeah, I was listening to it on audiobook and honestly, for me, I think I already discussed it in the last clip was that there was just too much romance and I wasn't a fan of the romance and how it was executed. And there were a couple of character decisions and plot decisions that I just also really kind of wasn't a fan of and the ending I didn't like. Honestly, there wasn't much that I did like about it. Again, I'm sorry, Ginger, but I have to be honest. Um, you know, I just don't think maybe it wasn't for me, really, and which is disappointing. And it's not that I went into it like knowing that I was going to like dislike it as much as I did. I wanted to give it an honest chance. Like, you know, I don't read historical fiction that much or historical romance because that's kind of what this felt like. So it's not really my thing, but I wanted to step outside of my comfort zone. And I think that's the whole point is to read someone else's favorite is to kind of introduce you to things that you probably wouldn't have picked up yourself. Um, so I went on a limb and, you know, gave it a shot. And, you know, I gave it an honest try. Um, but it did take me a while to get through that. And then also I've just been super busy, not only with work, but just like other things going on in my life. <sighs> I kind of was... Um, bitter for the last couple of days because I I'm trying to like get back into like the dating scene although I'm not like super into it at the moment um I just like swiping on people like that's just the fun part I don't like messaging people that's like the not fun part and um yeah just for one reason or another I'm just like super it's hard for me to like go out and like message people because I'm really like 
I'm not looking to like for to like be in a relationship I am like looking just to like date and just kind of see I don't want expectations of any kind and for the most part I've only really talked to like two people the first one um we're still like good friends but I think we just decided like that we're better off as friends I mean we still communicate but there's nothing romantic going on which I think is honestly for the best <laughs> and uh, this next person though he is more recent and we hit it off really well at least I thought so and you know I was kind of like doubting it from the beginning because he was like our you dating it all right now or are we just gonna be pen pals on here and I was like well I don't want to get your expectations up for anything but for the most part I haven't really been dating I've just I just go on dating apps to pass the time when I'm bored because like when do I have the time to actually date someone anymore anyways uh, we <laughs> kind of got into like a metaphor and we started joking around and we found that we got along really well we had like this some like similar senses of humor we weren't afraid to like poke fun at each other anyways long story short got my number we talked on the phone and had a great conversation for like an hour and 40 minutes and by the end of it I was like I guess I'll talk to you tomorrow this was on Wednesday and he was like or I, I didn't say tomorrow I was like I guess I'll talk to you later question mark and he's like I'm pretty sure we have a date on Friday so yes you will <laughs> And then so like he seemed like so into it and I've joked so many times like here's your out just in case and he was like listen there's no turning back now and lo and behold though Thursday afternoon he comes and texts me and says that he has to cancel the date and gives a very vague reason as to why doesn't let me know any of the specifics but it I mean at the same time it was so literally with like less than 24 hours so unless he's a psychopath <laughs> like it just was like faking emotion and like laughter and stuff like that and like I kind of have to like go with it and like say that okay like fine I mean it sucks the timing couldn't be worse but I guess you have my number if you need to reach out so I've just been kind of um like salty and sad and just overall bummed out because even like versus the person that I'm still friends with and that I was kind of dating I went on, we hung out a couple of times and we had not hit it off as well as like me and this other person did. Granted, we didn't even meet yet, so I didn't even get a chance to screw it up before he already called it, so. That's another reason why I've been kind of like not into reading is because I've just been wanting to lay in my bed and listening to music. But I do have an update because in the meantime, I did start reading The Wrath and the Dawn by Renee Audier and I've already now finished it. It's, I read it in like about three days and... Ginger, this makes up for <laughs> the Book of Lost Names because I gave this a 5 out of 5 stars. Of course, she and I kind of like knew that this was probably going to be the one that I loved the most because I loved The Beautiful by Renee Audier and that's the one that I recommended for her to read. Um, but oh my god, you want to talk about top tier romance and like this kind of rivals Jude and Carden so if you like that kind of dynamic... It's so good. I was addicted to the romance and the storytelling and I just love Renee Audier's writing. Like I'm learning that now. I'd only ever read The Beautiful and I haven't like looked into any of her other work. But now I feel like I need immediately need the sequel, The Rose and the Dagger, because uh, it was so good and I love the way that she described the environment and just like the palace and the world and everything. The characters, her writing is so beautiful. And again, the romance, top tier, the plot, the intrigue, amazing. So <laughs> thank you, because now I've gotten a five-star read. Thank you, Ginger. And I wouldn't, I don't know when I would have picked this up, but in case you don't know, this is like a retelling, a loose retelling of Scheherazade and the 1001 Nights, um, which I believe the original kind of, like, the main plot of this is that there is a caliph or a king, and at, he takes a new bride and every morning at dawn he has them killed. And in the original, I think that's is well similar, and Scheherazade, she um, manages to escape her fate by telling a story to the king, but every night uh, or every morning at dawn she leaves it off as a cliffhanger so she can live another day so he can finish the rest of the story because he like wants to know. Um, and that kind of starts off, that's how it is in the very beginning for this, and then more kind of plot things branch off from there. The romance though, 
was steamy and I was here for it and uh yeah I don't know what else to say besides gushing over this so I'm sorry I loved the, I mean I'm sorry I didn't like the book of lost names but thank you so much Ginger because this I'm rating a five out of five stars and I can't wait to pick up the next one and then to wrap up this update the next book that I'm gonna read originally like Ginger told me that I should have Berlioz like pick two of the books or like pick between because I was kind of in the middle like once I had finished the book of or once I knew that I was going to finish the book of lost names I didn't know what I was going to pick up but after it became a two-star read I wanted something that I knew I could easily read and that I would enjoy so that's why I went with the wrath and the dawn but now I feel like I'm in the mood for a middle grade so unfortunately I'm not gonna have Berlioz pick any of my books in this video which was a good idea Ginger I'm sorry I should have it just didn't work out that way but <laughs> think in honor of Berlioz and because it's a middle grade I am going to go with next Blue Stars Prophecy by Erin Hunter this is the warriors book that she had on her list and I work by myself tomorrow and the store that I'm going to be at is pretty slow. So I have a feeling that, knock on, I don't have fake wood around me, knock on wood that I'll be able to read a lot of this. Um, but I'm looking forward to this so hopefully this will be a fun little escape. And I'll probably actually start reading it tonight because it's still a little bit early. But other than that, nothing else is really new other than I need to clean my room. I got this, um beret which I don't really wear berets I don't really I have a few but I feel like I don't know how to wear them property properly but this one says Nam Juning and it's got like these little stars on the back and it's so cute <sighs> honestly I wish I were a beret person I don't know how to wear them though this like uh, like there's the Nam Juning part also I am getting makeup all over this I'm gonna need like help from Haley to style this because I have no idea but I have been wanting to go Nam Juning for so long. If you don't know, Nam Juning is like going to a park or going just out in nature. I want to, my dream right now is to like rent a cabin and just like be there and enjoy like the peace because I haven't had a day off in a while. Or like a consecutive days off, which would be nice just to have like a little mini vacation. I'm already upset though because I got makeup on this already. Dang it. <laughs> what? I was gonna try and grab them. <laughs> so yeah, anyways, I saw a suspicious package outside of our apartment because there's literally no label on this whatsoever. And I brought it inside against maybe better judgment, but I didn't know if someone had ordered something. Clearly, I mean, it was for me. And then more likely, I'm the one that ordered something. But um, yeah, I had my roommate unbox it or unwrap it outside just in case it was a little bit alarming, but it's not. It's just the album and it came all the way from Korea. I'm a little, a little gut beat up along the way, but it's fine. So, but I wanted to unbox it because I'm so excited. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh wait, shit. <laughs> this is like a whole like photo book <laughs> that came with the album, but I want to find. Well, Jimin first, obviously. But... Oh wait, no, we can admire JK though. <gasps> oh, look at him. He's so beautiful. So beautiful. Cardin who? I know. <laughs> They're so ethereal. <gasps> Speaking of ethereal, oh my <laughs> This is gonna be my new profile picture. <laughs> Why is he so beautiful? He's prettier than any human being like should ever be, honestly. Here we go. Oh <laughs> That's You're the... covering his face. Sorry. The best part. So I'll probably look at the rest of this, but I wanna see Remember BTS. <gasps> oh. Oh wait, did I get oh do you get all of them? Okay, well, the first one I saw was Namjoon. <laughs> that might be mysteriously missing from your production. <laughs> and then this is like a little Polaroid of them. Because normally you pull, I know. <laughs> unless I, unless this one you just get lucky and you get all of them, because that would be nice. And then there's all of them again. So beautiful. I love them. I'm gonna do like the hand thing. But oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thing. Yeah, I should do like, well, because there's a lot of these little things, so now I should feel like I should do like a collage or something. I'm gonna cry. <laughs> he's winking at me. That's like oh, his God. thing now. Is he's just winking at everyone. Oh my God. Oh, he is so pretty. They're so beautiful. Ugh, I need these pants. Oh my God. <laughs> Those look like old quilts. Like, I know, kind of, actually. But cute. It's like, but make it fashion. Oh, me. So this is the CD, and it's like this little frame thing. I guess is, is like this like meant to go in one of them? Like you can choose maybe? Maybe? Oh yeah. yeah it looks like it has little insert like, yeah. stuff in. So you can like, I guess, choose which one you want. Put them all in and it like, so it doesn't move around and you just swap out whichever one's in the front. 
that's a good idea. I'm not smart. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> oh my. It's a giant ass poster. <laughs> what? <gasps> There's more of that. <laughs> Reading hasn't going, been going that well, but it's fine because we have a new BTS album. But anyways, that's my unboxing segment of the vlog. Could you add um, the photo book to your Goodreads? I should, honestly. Get as your challenge. That's a whole <laughs> book right there. That's I like mean, a photography book. Yeah, it says, and like, um, the, I mean, the lyrics are on here, so technically I could read them. Mm -hmm. They actually do have um, a book that they've like posted notes in. It's called the, it's called Beautiful Moments in Life, which you can buy, which I've been thinking about buying because I think they like, like wrote like personal things in it. Why haven't you bought it yet? That's because sounds like your perfect book. The fuck? It's like forty dollars to ship it from Korea. Oh. <laughs> I think that's just part of the aesthetic. Oh. Anyways, now I'm just gonna. This isn't even a video anymore. This is just me looking at their yeah, pictures. Enjoying your, enjoying your life. Yes. Okay. Reading update later. Okay, so it's actually the next morning since I filmed that last clip. Wait, so Ginger's video went up, or part one of her video, and it made me feel bad that I'm so blind. It definitely gave me some added motivation to continue reading and push through and continue on with the vlog. I think I even mentioned the last time I updated, I, which was when I was giving The Wrath of the Dawn five stars. I said that I was gonna read Blue Star's Prophecy next, which I did start, and as you can see, oh no, my cat. But I am about halfway through, I'm on chapter 22. I didn't realize that this was like 500 pages, first of all, so this is a pretty long middle grade. And I had to kind of put a pause on it because wasn't enjoying it as much as I thought I would. Like I went into this like thinking that this was gonna be like another, probably like four star or even possibly five star read because like I said, I read Into the Wild, which is the first book in the first arc of the Warrior series and I really liked it. Um, I checked to see if this one was on audio, which it was, but it wasn't going to be done by the same narrator as the original. And I think because I never continued on with the first series that reading this kind of felt almost, almost, but not quite exactly the same as um, the Into the Wild did. Because we follow kind of in the beginning Blue Stars well, Blue Kit. So it starts off with Blue Kit. She's born with her sister Snow Kit, and it's just like them growing up, learning about the warriors culture and becoming apprentices and, you know, hunting and stuff like that. And I felt like a lot of the plot points were kind of recycled from Into the Wild. Like if maybe if I hadn't just read Into the Wild, maybe continued on with the series, I wouldn't have minded going over the same thing. To me, because I'd already read Into the Wild and I already, like, we already didn't know, like, the warrior <laughs> culture, um, I feel like it wasn't very necessary because I don't know exactly, like, what it kind of set up because we don't get any sort of sense that Blue Star is special until I think she's, like, an apprentice. There is kind of one major thing happen that happens to Blue, St Blue Star. I'm gonna call her Blue Star even though throughout the book like, she's in different stages of her life, so she's not always Blue Star. Something does happen. Something tragic like, happens to Blue Star and her sister, so it kind of, like, changes her attitude a little bit. And she's like that for a while, but then she kind of goes back to her normal self. So I don't really know, again, why that was, like, a necessary part of the plot, because I don't see it being as a big motivator for her to do something drastic. The whole point of maybe, like, what I've read so far is for her to kind of question the rules that, um... The warrior society have made up because she's not quite understanding why the different clans can't get along like if they can come together once a month for like their meetings like why can't they find a way why not be more diplomatic rather than just going straight for fighting which there are a lot of action sequences in this which there were in um into the wild i think it worked though because into the wild was a little bit shorter and so i guess there there couldn't have been as many and then also the Rusty is not only, he's like fresh, he's a kitty pet, so he knows nothing, so we kind of have like an underdog character. Whereas Blue Star, I don't really know what her thing is, to be honest. She's just kind of there. The battle sequences, so this is 500 pages long and we've probably already had like three or four battles. I think it just kind of can be repetitive after a bit, especially when they don't really, to me it doesn't seem like they really accomplish anything other than just a way to provide conflict when in reality, it probably wasn't necessary or you probably could have figured out other ways to create this conflict. What I do like about this though is because um, Blue Star becomes Blue Star when 
Rusty, the main character of the original arc, is joins the warrior clan. So we already kind of know like where she should end up, but this is kind of like her journey to becoming that. And there's also um, kittens that were just born that are actually like adult characters when Rusty is in the story of the original like, I'm pretty sure because there's like a lion kit, a tiger kit, which it's really interesting, especially if you know the story arc for Tiger <laughs> Tiger Kid. So I think that's interesting. I'm, I'm intrigued more now for the second half. I'm hoping it picks up, but I did have to take a break from it because I felt like it was kind of getting a little bit repetitive, bogging down, and I wasn't seeing really where the direction of the story was going. So I ended up picking up my last book, Truth Witch by Susan Dennard, and I'm really liking this so far. Again, this is probably because <laughs> it's stuck most to my own personal tastes. I really like uh, the two main characters. I guess there's technically three, but Sophia and Isolt. Um, I love their dynamic. They're hilarious. Um, they're like kind of like a, their best friend sisterlyhood bond is so enjoyable to read. This is about Sophia and Isolt. They're kind of like on the run and um, Sophia is a truth witch. And so she can kind of, if she's looking someone in the eye, she can detect like the truth and everything kind of about them. She can see them for what they are. Isolt's power is a little bit more interesting than I'm trying to like kind of figure out. She's a thread witch and she can kind of see the threads between other people and their, their connections. Um, but she cannot see the threads between herself and someone else. And then we've also ran into a character named Merrick who is a wind witch. So he has the ability to control air. And um, Sophia and Isolt are kind of like, they're on the run because they run into it, this like blood witch. There's like a lot of things going on, but basically they're on the run and I'm excited to see what hijinks they get into. So I'm super excited for this. <laughs> um, I'll probably, I'm bringing both of these to work with me. Um, I might try and get a little bit further into Blue Star's Prophecy. Just because now that I've like taken a break from it, I think maybe and I've like talked through it maybe my mind is a little bit more refreshed to kind of tackle it again those are the two books that I'm reading right now and hopefully I will have another update for you guys pretty soon very else are you part of shadow clan are you a warrior are you the leader yes he is a warrior and he will defend his territory Okay, I've taken too long as it is already, so I need to wrap up this video. I, my deepest, deepest apologies to Ginger because she's been waiting. She <laughs> stuck to the time schedule. She was able to read all of the books and I think like it's, it's, it's taken me the entire month. And I honestly did not expect this. I just feel really bad. <laughs> but I mean, I, I kind of explained, I think the whole thing with like what I had talked about earlier with like, I don't know, being canceled on and just other stuff that has kind of happened recently is kind of affected. I just heard my roommate's door open and now I got nervous <laughs> to talk. <laughs> Long story short, I think it just affected my mindset and self-confidence and stuff like that. So um, I kind of got distracted being emo for a while um but i have finally finished um the last two books so i'm here to wrap this up and wrap up this video so it can finally go up and yeah again i'm sorry ginger um but wrapping up so i finished blue stars prophecy which is the warriors book by aaron hunter i think i kind of was giving you a little bit of an update of what i had thought about this going into it in the end i gave it a 3.5 stars i like like the action sequences and I always enjoy Erin Hunter's writing. I think she does a very good job of like descriptions and um, she can really create an atmosphere and make you feel like what the characters are feeling and stuff like that. Um, I think just for me though because it was so similar not only to Into the Wild it felt very repetitive and I think all of the Warriors books kind of follow at least not all because I've only read two so I can't say that but this one very felt fell into the formula of you know there's a cat there's a prophecy there's a battle and then, you know, stuff like that. Like, it felt very, like, that's how it is. And so that's what I mean by repetitive. And then also kind of <laughs> the names got a little bit much, too. There were so many cats. 
so many cats like almost to the point where I'm like do we need this many cats <laughs> like all of these characters you could have like a list of the cat names like on a page and like I just wasn't sure why we needed that many cats to deal with and I think a lot of this could have been cut out I think if we had started I guess not when even she was a kitten because I don't even think that would be that important before she became an apprentice I think that would have been fine also there was a lot of like sad moments in this and I kind of don't like Blue Star as a character um she made some decisions towards the end that really didn't make any sense to me and she kept changing her mind and flip-flopping on what she wanted and that was kind of irritating especially because when you get towards the end of the book you kind of want to get a feel for the character and their motives and what they're going to do where she kind of just again just didn't make any sense and i don't like i don't think she was really justified in some of her actions and i didn't see like her entire character arc like i don't understand how she i don't know why she took the steps she did to be where she was and i also don't think that she very like she grew as a character like at all like there were definitely parts of her personality that could have been improved and i don't know if they ever were like the biggest thing too like because she is like i think like it set it up as if she was going to question kind of like the status quo in society and why you know things are the way they are and why they can't be more diplomatic when it comes to like the different clan relations and then she does and she asks these questions and people get frustrated with her all this time because you know like are you sympathetic like people say like are you sympathetic to other cats like are you sympathetic like you should be protecting your own people and she's like no that's not it she's like but don't you think there's another like a better way that we can you know get along and she's like that throughout the whole book and then she towards the end she makes it, it do, never comes to fruition like you expect some kind of like big act of defiance or stuff like that and none of that really happens and so i don't know i just didn't really like her character um which is kind of sad because i liked her character in um the original series i thought she was kind of selfish irrational and she didn't <laughs> i guess improve for me at all so i i just had trouble like sympathizing for her a lot of unnecessary like deaths that didn't need to happen and i feel like the only reason why they happened was for a particular scene on the end to like motivate her to do better which was kind of kind of dumb in my opinion there was a moment at the end that really made me sad and that almost made me want to put down the book because blue star just pissed me off so much so i like the writing i like the um other characters also like i said before what's interesting is that we do get an introduction to some of the characters that we meet later on and i liked seeing their backstory because it kind of gave context on how they became the way that they are i like the writing like the atmosphere there are some of the like i said some of the other characters that i enjoyed so overall i gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars and then lastly the last book that i have to talk about with you which i only gave like a brief update on but that was because i was trying to like power read it <laughs> that is truth witch um the dust jacket is somewhere else but it's truth witch and um i ended up giving this a four out of five stars i thought this was a really solid fantasy book especially because i think this is susan's correct me if i'm wrong i think this is her debut i really liked again the writing i loved the relationships between um the two main characters sophia and isolt isolt ended up being my favorite character i also did like sophia but she was kind of involved with um a romance with the other main character that i wasn't too fond of and i think isolt is gonna have like a romance of her own but isolt has the most interesting uh character arc and plot line and like everyone's so the whole point of this book is basically it's a big chase after the truth witch which is sophia because um if you control like a truth witch her power is very rare and so um a lot of people want to use her and like um in order to have like political gain and basically the entire plot of the book is just a there was like a treaty and they're trying to break the treaty to start like a war and like the whole war is over like the most powerful witches and like territory and so everyone's kind of after <laughs> sophia and then um there's also the blood witch that's still like um tailing them the entire time and he's just kind of creepy in there and he's like a mercenary working for another person who's trying to capture them yeah so Isolde actually ended up being my favorite character and i'm really interested to see how her character develops as time goes on uh Isolde is the thread witch and so she has the ability to like not only see threads between different people and their connections but she can also i guess get a sense of like emotions because the threads will turn different colors and she can kind of interpret based on the color like the emotion that they're feeling and there's another cool interesting factor of that they kind of discuss in the beginning of the book but i don't want to talk about it because i don't know if it's like too spoilery i've told some of my friends um who have asked me what the book is about but um there's also i'll just say that there's a big bad called the puppeteer and i'm really interested to um a find out who it is and um let's just say that isolt gets involved with this person um <laughs> accidentally 
or I don't even know if it's accidentally, I'm just like um, speculating at this point. And the other characters was Merrick, and he was okay. And then the other character, Edwin, who was the Blood Witch, he was also okay. Um, so like there was a couple of things, like I said, with the romance, I don't, I had trouble like pitying with like Merrick because he's trying to save, he's like a prince and he's trying to save his kingdom because they're like kind of poor right now and he needs money and he's just a little bit desperate. I don't know, I think he just kind of annoyed me with some of his decision making. Also there's a cool like boat atmosphere which I didn't realize like a lot of this book takes place like on like a voyage and there were some cool um like creatures that they ran into and also like lore. So in the end I, I really did like it. There were a few things like character wise that I wasn't too much of a fan of. I really wish that we had more gotten more development on Edwin's character which is the um blood witch didn't really have a plot line like his plot line was just kind of dependent on whatever Sophia and Isolde were doing because he was just chasing them the entire time I kind of wish he had a little bit more agency which he kind of does towards the end because he seems like this like everyone's kind of scared of him because he has like a very rare power and he can control people's blood basically like kind of like I guess like um a corporalki like heart render if you've ever read the Grisha trilogy kind of like that I thought it was a very solid book I really enjoyed it I will probably continue on with the series however I don't know when that's gonna be so I gave this a solid four out of five stars it wasn't something that was gonna be my all-time favorites but that's okay because I still really enjoyed it and I'm glad that that's how I ended up wrapping up this reading because I'm st it took forever and I was feeling really bad and ginger again I'm sorry <laughs> I'm gonna try and edit this as fast as possible I've already edited everything up until this point oh a couple of things I did want to mention though before I forget it, ginger I loved your videos by the way they were both amazing and I loved um, seeing your reactions to things um, I believe in your part two video you asked me how I had come across the bees by Laylene Paul and it's funny because um, I used to watch booktube all the time I mean, I, less now, back when, you know, you had the big ones. I mean, they're still pretty big, like Jesse the Reader, um, Reagan from Peru's Project, um, Haley from Haley and Bookland. I know they're still making content, but those are like the creators that I started watching first. One of the earliest videos I had ever watched was um, Reagan from a Peru's Project. Um, she did a video called Her Favorite Covers, or like the most beautiful covers. And that's where I had first seen the bees, is she had it on her list. I'll probably try and link the video down below if I can find it. It's pretty old, it's probably like from 2016 or something like that. Maybe, possibly even earlier. And I had seen it and I also really enjoyed that book cover. So I really, I don't even think she had read it yet because she didn't give like a synopsis of it at all. And I had bought it just purely based on the cover. This was before I had started collecting like a big ton of books. So <laughs> it wasn't because I had been so early on and like getting back into reading. I actually read the books that I bought. Um, whereas now like I just buy things as a hobby into like for emotional coping and I like never get to them anymore So I actually read this book probably about three or four years ago and it was unlike anything that I had ever read before kind of like what you said um, And I don't know if there was another question that you had asked But I know for sure that was one of them and then was there anything else that I wanted to say? Yeah, so I actually the how I discovered it was through booktube like old-school booktube um, Reagan from a Proust project she had it in a video and I saw it and thus I had picked it up and I read it. There was I thought there was something else that I wanted to mention, but I guess not. Um, I'm really glad that you <laughs> liked the books that I had picked out um, for the majority of them. Um, and I had a really fun time. Like, I'm sorry that I lost steam, but I'm so down to do this again. I know I've already commented on your books. I think I've on your books on your videos. Um, I am down to do this again, and I promise to try and like not be so terrible as it is <laughs> as it was before um i think i just got distracted with yeah not feeling the best and but i'm ready to move past that now like i've kind of vented to a couple of friends and like it's made me feel better but i i've kind of also held on to it and i just need to kind of push it aside and maybe refocus my attention elsewhere so i won't think about it as much that's uh, in lieu of therapy because I can't afford that. Thank you so much for your patience and I hope you enjoy this video most of all because this is for you and I had such a fun time and I hope everyone else if you've watched this enjoy it as well. Um, go check out Ginger's videos. I will link them below. Go check out her Etsy shop. I will also link that below and um, yeah finally I can wrap up this video. I apologize that it's taken so long and hopefully I will see you guys soon. Bye.